Son Excellence, Monsieur Patrick Haché, Premier ministre de la République de Côte d'Ivoire. Mesdames et Messieurs les ministres représentants des chefs d'État du Botswana, du Kenya, du Nigeria, du Mozambique et du Rwanda. Mesdames et Messieurs les ministres et gouverneurs de la Banque africaine de développement. Madame la ministre Niale Kaba, ministre du Plan et du Développement de la République de Côte d'Ivoire. Docteur Akinoumi Adesina, président du groupe de la Banque africaine de développement. Mesdames et Messieurs les partenaires fondateurs de l'Africa Investment Forum. Mesdames et Messieurs les hauts fonctionnaires de la République de Côte d'Ivoire. Mesdames et Messieurs membres du corps diplomatique et représentants des organisations internationales accréditées en République de Côte d'Ivoire. Chers administrateurs du groupe de la Banque africaine de développement, la haute direction et le personnel du groupe de la Banque africaine de développement, la Maison des médias, distingués invités, mesdames et messieurs. Soyez les bienvenus à la cérémonie de clôture de la troisième édition de l'Africa Investment Forum Market Days, édition 2022. Durant trois jours, nous avons été en présence de chefs d'État, de CEO de personnalités politiques, de patrons d'institutions, d'hommes, de femmes d'affaires, de porteurs de projets, de représentants d'institutions financières. Je, je, je continue ou je m'arrête là Parce que la liste est très longue, on pourrait continuer encore et encore. Tout ça pour dire que c'était « the place to be ». Et tous ceux que je viens de citer ont fait beaucoup plus qu'être présents en réalité, puisqu'ils ont scellé des ententes, signé des contrats, collaborer ensemble dans une optique noble. Le développement est donc le rayonnement du continent africain. Et comme une image vaut mille mots, je vous propose de regarder une vidéo qui va résumer ces trois journées. urgent de mobiliser des investissements importants et structurants tenant compte des enjeux environnementaux dans l'agriculture, l'agro-industrie, le développement industriel, les infrastructures et le capital humain. Our world faces three major challenges which are called the three C's: COVID, climate, and conflicts. The solutions to these challenges is what I call the three F's, finance, finance, and finance. There is an angle when people talk about financing for women-led businesses, you keep hearing microcredit. And I think that needs to change. We shouldn't limit women to microcredit because it never helps us to actually grow and develop. This is time for Africa to empower in Africa, to empower uh, entrepreneurs in Africa, essentially women and youth. And women are the ones that ensure that uh, we prepare for our future. They're the ones that think about these things because they're the ones uh, that ensure that young people are educated. We have a labor force that is highly educated and it can adapt to any skills uh, or technologies that can be introduced. Biggest asset, biggest is its people. Look at everybody here. Smart, incredible, talented. On a des problématiques communes, tous les pays d'Afrique. 
On a de beaux accomplissements qu'il faut célébrer. On a aussi une longue route devant nous. Et je retiens aussi qu'il tient à cœur à tous nos dirigeants de trouver les bonnes solutions et surtout d'écouter les acteurs du secteur pour pouvoir prendre des bonnes décisions. And I believe that in that, we have a, a, a potentially a major game changer for the development of the continent. As far as I'm concerned, our message is the smart money is in Africa. Take advantage of it. As we just saw this video, I'm sure that you agree with me. The energy during this forum was amazing, was incredible. And now I would like to invite on stage a lady that has been working with her amazing team nights and days over and over for months in order to make sure that this forum will be a success. They went to dozens of capitals on their roadshows, attended countless roundtables. They were behind the scene, setting up everything to make this forum so unique, and they made it happen. We are all gathered here today, waiting for, with enthusiasm to hear the big numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like more than a warm welcome for Mrs. Chinelo Anohu, Senior Director of the Africa Investment Forum, please. Good evening, the Prime Minister of the uh, Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, and um, good evening, standing on all the other protocols. Um, it's an honor to be here today. It's a relief. It's um, a humbling experience. And I'd like to, first of all, thank everyone for coming. For those who do not know what the Africa Investment Forum is all about, I would take it second to say to you that this is a platform initiated by President Akimumi Adesina. And in initiating it, he enlisted the uh, support and collaboration of seven founding partners, whom we all met today. And what we have in that collaborative approach is the Africa Investment Forum, a transaction-making platform, multi-stakeholder, multidisciplinary, and geared towards raising capital, project preparation, and accelerating deals to a financial close. I repeat, accelerating deals to a financial close. <laughs> that is what we do, and we take particular pride in doing that. The project preparation aspect re be remains a very strong pillar of the Africa Investment Forum because contrary to perception across the world, there is no shortage of capital. What we have are deals that are prepared to attract that capital. I'd like to take a moment to thank our host country. Um, I've do done a lot of work across the continent, but um, in our surgeon in Côte d'Ivoire, I was particularly impressed by the synergy of um, both the initiative and the implementation from President Al Hassan Ouattara through to the Vice President uh, Kone, through to the Prime Minister Patrick Ashi, and of course, all the ministers, particular mention to our strong woman, uh, Minister Kabanieli. There has been a consistency in both the initiation and the delivery. And what we find is a country ready to explore the vast potentials and implement them. So I thank you very much, Côte d'Ivoire. And um, I would like also to thank the president of the African Development Bank. 
it's been a, a very challenging road for the Africa Investment Forum, but I thank him for standing firm. I thank him for the uncountable times that text messages and WhatsApp messages come to him in the middle of the night seeking direction, and he gives it unfinchingly. I thank him for the time that we've counted on him to give us the support we need, despite a lot of um, things to the contrary. He has stood firm in the vision, and what we see today is just the tip of the iceberg. The continent has not been explored. The continent has just as much resources of what lies above and what lies beneath. And the job of the African Investment Forum is to actualize that potential. And we've started, and it's fun. And I'm not going to spoil the surprise. I'd like Mr. President, uh, President Akimumi Adeshino, to tell you all about what the results of this exciting three days have been. It was kind of hard to get people in to the halls for the plenaries. This is the first time since the COVID there has been a physical meeting. And you could see that people just wanted to talk to each other. They just wanted to do business face to face. They didn't want to Zoom. They wanted to give people a hug, talk about their businesses. And um, what we see is that we have just begun. And it's up to us to ensure that the continent is what it ought to be. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, thank you very much and congratulations to you. Ladies and gentlemen, the time that you have been waiting for has come. The big moment, le grand moment est arrivé from Africa's optimist in chief, President Akinwumi Adesina, President of the African Development Bank Group that I'm welcoming, that we are all welcoming to give us the big numbers. Thank you very much, uh, merci beaucoup, Marie-Angèle. Your Excellency, Patrick Prime Minister of Côte d'Ivoire and my dear brother, Madame Kaba Niali, the Ministre de la Planification Nationale et le Développement de la Côte d'Ivoire. Si les gens connaissent uh, Madame Kaba Niali, Elle est la ministre de la planification et le développement. Mais je pense qu'on doit ajouter quelque chose pour ça. Elle peut danser beaucoup, hein? <laughs> <laughs> et on était uh, sur le, le dîner de gala hier soir. Et moi, je suis président qui danse, donc c'est pas... Donc on a pris, on a commencé à danser, à danser, mais moi je ne peux pas arrêter. Donc parce qu'elle est ministre de la planification, elle devrait quand même arrêter les cérémonies. Elle est venue sur la plateforme, elle m'a fait comme ça, vers la plateforme pour aller continuer à danser. Moi donc j'ai continué à danser et elle m'a poussé comme ça, j'ai dit mais madame on doit continuer à danser. Elle dit non, on danse vers la porte. <rire> Merci beaucoup, Madame. Honorable ministers that are here present, presidents of the African Investment Forum partner institutions, I know many of them um, have to also go to COP27 and they traveled, but I recognize two of them that are here uh, 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 with us. Uh, Admasu Tadese, the president um, and the chief executive officer of the Trade and Development Bank but also uh, Alain Ebobise, the CEO of Africa 50. Your Excellencies, ambassadors, heads of diplomatic organizations, executive directors of the African Development Bank Group, the senior vice president and vice presidents and management and staff of the African Development Bank Group, and same also for all the partner institutions, and you, 
the dear participants and investors from around the world, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and of course, my sweetheart Grace, please give it up to my wife because <laughs> thank you very much. Well, well, we're back for the closing ceremony of the Africa Investment Forum. How fast 72 hours can go by. So good evening to everybody. Welcome to this closing ceremony of the Africa Investment Forum 2022. Now, three days ago, we all got out from around the world with a focus on Africa and with a focus on investments in Africa. Africa, because the continent is the investment frontier destination of the world. Africa, because the continent brims with enormous potentials, potentials in infrastructure, rare minerals, renewable energy, oil and gas, agriculture, manufacturing, digital and creative industries, and of course, sports. If you were really in the session with Masai Ujiri today, honestly, you will put a lot of your money into sports. Africa, because of its huge and dynamic and entrepreneurial youth, our best assets. People say the youth of Africa are Africa's future. No, they are not Africa's future. They are Africa's present. We heard a lot about the potential of Africa. We celebrate, of course, Africa's potential. But there is no market for potential. Nobody eats potential. We gather to unlock and unleash the potential of Africa via investments. As I walked around the forum, I saw and I witnessed dynamism. I felt the excitement, the drive, and the focus on investing more in Africa. I felt a buzz in the corridors, the hallways, the boardrooms, that indeed Africa is bankable. As I visited some of the boardrooms, I could not but be impressed with the quality and the diversity of the projects, the clarity and engaging nature of the presentations by the project sponsors, the incisiveness of the questions raised by the investors. I was impressed to see heads of states and governments acting as CEOs of their countries, chairing sessions, engaging investors, promoting investments in their countries, and providing assurances that investments will be safe, secure, with very strong political and policy commitments. That's what makes the Africa Investment Forum different. It's not so much about your excellencies, it's about excellent projects. That is the focus, deals, deals, and deals. So in three days, you have all been working on deals. Yes, we know the times are difficult financially with geopolitical developments all around our world. But we are not deterred by this because we know that Africa is bankable. And you, the investors, know, at least many of you know, even by now, that Africa is bankable. So I am delighted to announce that in the past 72 hours, you, who participated in the Africa Investment Forum, collectively, we successfully mobilized $31 billion in investment interest for projects. Wow. Now that is incredible. I can't hear you from here, though. <laughs> well done, everybody. It's all adding up and adding up so well for Africa. The year 2022 is a year it has two and two. 
and it is what I call delivering double, double for Africa Investment Forum. For the first time in the history of Africa Investment Forum since we started, we held it twice in one year, virtually in March of 2022, and of course in the last three days, November 2nd to November 4th of 2022. In March of 2022, the Africa Investment Forum mobilized $32.8 billion in investment interest for Africa. In the past three days, it mobilized an additional $31 billion, making a total of $63.8 billion of investment interest mobilized for Africa by the Africa Investment Forum this year alone. Thank you. Now, in Nigeria, you know, we, we, we like to dance in Nigeria, you know. I, we have a song that says, everything is double-double. And uh, just so that you know how it is, we always say, everything now double-double, now double-double, everything now, which means everything is double and double. That's how that song actually goes. And I remember when I was minister of agriculture and I was going to the National Assembly, Minister Azira, maybe you might dance like that on your way one day, might help you as you go to National Assembly. And I was dancing, going over there, and I always said, agriculture na dobu dobu, na dobu dobu. <laughs> well, the Africa Investment Forum delivered double double for 2022, congratulations. <laughs> the success of the Africa Investment Forum was because of you. More than 1,800 people, project sponsors, investors, and delegates from around the world, you made the difference for Africa. I wish now to thank, I have so many thanks to give. I give thanks to God first and foremost for helping us to make this a successful event. I wish to thank President Alassane Ouattara for his incredible personal support and that of the government of Cote d'Ivoire. <laughs> thank you to the Vice President Kone of Cote d'Ivoire, the Prime Minister Achi of Cote d'Ivoire, Minister Cabanelli, Madame Laforce Tranquille, for her strong support and partnership. I would like to thank President Nana Akufo Addo, the CEO of Ghana Incorporated. <laughs> President Emerson Manangagwa, the CEO of Zimbabwe Incorporated. <laughs> President Sally Wok Zude, the CEO of Ethiopia Incorporated, for being here with us. I'd also like to thank the Vice President Jewel Howard Taylor of Liberia. Vice President Pango of Tanzania, the Prime Minister Korea Il Silva of Cabo Verde, who represented their presidents as CEOs of their respective countries, Incorporated. <laughs> and of course, we are honored to have representations from President Paul Kagame of Rwanda, represented by Minister of Finance Uziel Indaji Gimana. My own president, President Mohamed Buhari of Nigeria, represented by my dear sister, the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, who can now dance double-double on the way to the National Assembly. <laughs> president Sasu Ungesu of Congo, represented by the Minister of State, the State Minister, Jean-Jacques Bouya. <laughs> president Talon of Benin, represented by Finance Minister Romold Wadagne. <laughs> President Masisi of Botswana, represented by Minister Gafela. <laughs> and of course, President Yusi of Mozambique, represented by Minister Matthew Magala, I almost say Vice President, because he was my Vice President at the bank. <laughs> I wish to thank the President of the ECOWAS Commission, Umar Toure, the Secretary General of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, Secretary Wamkele, many, you see, their presence was very important. 
because it helps us to have regional importance to all the investments we are making. I wish to thank the powerful delegations from governments from around the world, especially the United States of America that has such a huge delegation, led by Richard Joe Lewis, <laughs> President and Chair of the Export-Import Bank of the United States of America, as well as the Vice President of the Korean Exim Bank, Sang Ho Lee, <laughs> the Brazilian Development Bank, and the Japanese Association of Corporate Executives, represented by Ken Shibusawa. <laughs> I'd like to thank our incredible partners, the AI Partner Institutions, Africa Export Import Bank, the Africa Finance Corporation, Africa 50, Development Bank of Southern Africa, the European Investment Bank, the Islamic Development Bank Group, and the Trade and Development Bank for their hard work and efforts and collaboration and cooperation in mobilizing support around the projects. I said at the press events that we all held together collectively that there is not a single project today in Africa that is bigger than all of us. And I'm confident that there is nothing that we really cannot do in Africa. We will develop the projects. We will de-risk the projects. We will syndicate around the projects. We will co-finance around the projects. No project that is strategic in Africa that falls here that will not grow. And I also wanted to make a commitment so that it's not just about what we announced when we had our meeting together with the partners I said to them that we've got to commit to some big things for next year. So in the interest of transparency, I'm going to tell you. Three things. First and foremost, that we will work on special agro-industrial processing zones all across Africa. And the low bar is for Africa to feed itself. The high bar is for Africa to feed the world. The second thing we agreed that we are going to work on, it's on the issue of value chains for lithium ion batteries. You see, we have cobalt, we've got nickel, we've got lithium, and all these things are exactly what you need to make electric cars. So as I said in my opening remarks to this forum, the future of electric cars in the world depends on Africa. But we are not going to make the same mistakes again of exporting raw materials, no. We want to develop value chains to manufacture lithium ion batteries for electric cars, and why not electric cars right here in Africa? <laughs> and thirdly, we are all heading to Sharm el Sheikh. I will be leaving tomorrow for Sharm el Sheikh, and many of you are heading over there. We are all talking about renewable energy. God loves Africa. And God has given us a tremendous amount of sunshine. We have 11 terawatts of solar power, which is the highest in the world. And we have, at the African Development Bank, we are making a $20 billion program to harness the power of that sunlight, to light up the entire Sahelian region of Africa, all across 11 countries. That will provide electricity for 250 million people. And it will be the largest solar zone in the world. <laughs> but as we do that, we have to make sure that we can actually produce the polysilicons right here. And of course, the, um, the, the solar panels right here in Africa. So we, the partners on this platform, took a bold decision that we will support the manufacturing of solar panels in Africa. So we give ourselves a task, which we have to report back to you the progress we are making. Alan, are you here? Tadase, are you here? You have to give me, I have to hear you. Where are you? you got, can you get up and so they can see you that I'm not alone on this? All right. <laughs> We will come back to you. That's what we want our continent to be, at the top of the value chain, never again at the bottom of the value chain. 
The success we saw today could not have been possible without some critical people who worked so hard night and day for months to make this happen. They are a formidable team. Many thanks to the Senior Director of the Africa Investment Forum, Chinelo Anohu. Can you please stand? <laughs> For excellent work, perseverance, doggedness, and incredible effort in the face of several challenges, well done. <laughs> Onike Nicole Hura, where are you in this hall? Oh, yeah. Please give it up to her because she's the lead for the investor engagement work stream and she worked so hard, she had to be hospitalized twice as she was planning this event. Thank you, Onike. Thank you to the team of the Africa Investment Forum, Martin Oji, the lead for transaction work stream and your team, thank you. Thank you to all the bank staff and all our partner institutions who worked so hard and you delivered communications and media. And I want to particularly recognize my director uh, of media, Solomon Mugera, because, as you know, Solomon, where are you? All right. <laughs> you know, there are people that they just like to work in the background is Director of Communications of the bank. And I called him before this event started. I said, I wanted you on stage to be able to play a function. And he said, Mr. President, no, I'll be backstage making sure everything works. <laughs> Talk about wonderful attitude. And that's the attitude we have all across the bank I'm proud of all of my staff. The communications and media team, the protocols team, the security and health services, oh, the procurement teams, the legal services, because there are contracts to be signed, the language services. We can hear each other, you know, with the interpreters. Haven't they done a wonderful job? <laughs> and of course, the drivers driving all the ministers, heads of state around, and the security forces. Without them, what would we do? Thank you very, very much. <laughs> now, thank you to my senior leadership team, especially my senior vice president, Swazi Shabalala, vice presidents, de director generals, directors, and managers. If you are in the hall, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> and of course, you know, what can you do uh, without your board of directors? The board of directors makes all the decisions. So are my board members here? All right, please stand. <laughs> Thank you very much to our board of directors for their support, incredible support for us on this. Thank you. And most importantly, my appreciation goes to a particular group, <laughs> and that is you. Can you please stand and clap for yourself? <laughs> You're the most important part of this, you know. Uh, without you, what we will be doing? <laughs> thank you, and thank you, and thank you very, very much. Thank you. Uh, you made the business-to-business -business discussions, uh, the panel discussions, the boardroom deals happen. I wish you also recognize somebody who also worked incredibly hard. Javier Fournier, are you here with the last Javier? May you see you in the Yes, okay, please. <laughs> Javier Fournier was the one who and his team put together this event. What an incredible work they did with all the logistics that you see. Everything you see here was put together by them and also the partner team. So thank you. I'd like to thank Publicis, the company that actually helped us to set all the setup, all the things you see, was done by uh, Javier and their team with Publicis. So thank you to Publicis for a job well done. <laughs> thank you to the hotel staff, Hotel, hotel Ivoire, merci beaucoup uh, pour tout le service que vous avez rendu, uh, pour rendre cette uh, occasion vraiment grand succès. Merci beaucoup pour tout le personnel. <laughs> and my gratefulness 
to you, the members of the press, for being here. If you've been following the story, the press has been covering this a lot. And thank you for writing the story of the success and beaming them from across the world of the success stories of investments from Africa, right here from the Africa Investment Forum. Now, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let us, let our collective success now motivate us to do more for Africa. Together, let us change opportunities for millions of our people in Africa. It's not just about the money, it's about the people. And we must accelerate hope and bring it to pass faster for all of our people in Africa. Together, let us turn their hope into reality, a reality of wealth across Africa. For Africa must shine. I wish you all safe travels as you travel back to your respective homes. May God bless you all with double, double. May God bless Africa with double, double. See you next year for the Africa Investment Forum 2023. Thank you very much and everything now double, double. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Je voudrais revenir sur un chiffre, hein, 31 billion dollars. Nous venons de le constater, rien n'est impossible à l'Africa Investment Forum. C'est extraordinaire, en 72 heures à peine. Et ce qui a également été possible, c'est de vivre trois jours intenses de travail dans le cadre somptueux de cet endroit qui, pour la petite histoire, a été inauguré il y a près de 60 ans par le président Félix Oufouet de Boigny, un bâtisseur. Et ce que nous sommes en train de faire aujourd'hui, c'est de bâtir l'Afrique de demain. Toute sa vie, il apprenait l'hospitalité à l'ivoirienne. Il apprenait l'hospitalité légendaire de la Côte d'Ivoire. Et une fois de plus, le pays de l'hospitalité, la Côte d'Ivoire, a été au-delà de certaines attentes, au-delà de ce qu'on pouvait attendre. Les délégués ont été stupéfaits par la chaleur de l'accueil qui leur a été réservé. Et d'ailleurs, on le voit hein, dans les accolades entre les officiels qui sont ici dans cette salle, on sent la véritable chaleur qu'il y a en Côte d'Ivoire. Une chaleur qui a été transmise dès le début de ce forum par les autorités de la Côte d'Ivoire. Je laisse le président du groupe de la Banque africaine de développement finir de saluer effectivement tous ceux qui ont fait le déplacement pour cet événement avant de pouvoir annoncer la suite de l'événement. Donc je parlais de chaleur, effectivement, et cette chaleur a été transmise dès le début de ce forum par le premier ministre de la Côte d'Ivoire, de la République de Côte d'Ivoire, son Excellence, M. Patrick Cachy, que je vous demande d'accueillir à présent chaleureusement sur scène. Madame, euh, Monsieur le Président du groupe de la Banque africaine de développement, Madame le ministre du Plan et du Développement, Mesdames et Messieurs, tout protocole observé. Au terme de ces trois journées d'intenses travaux qui ont meublé cette troisième édition de l'Africa Investment Forum, je voudrais, au nom de Son Excellence, Monsieur Alassane Ouattara, Président de la République de Côte d'Ivoire, de M. Thiemoko Miele Kone, vice-président de la République de Côte d'Ivoire, du gouvernement et en mon nom personnel, adresser mes vices remerciements à tous et à toutes pour cette mobilisation exceptionnelle. L'Africa Investment Forum 2022 a connu un franc succès grâce à votre présence, la qualité de vos échanges et votre engagement à conclure des transactions portant sur des investissements durables. La Côte d'Ivoire s'honore de la présence effective de trois chefs d'État africains, trois vice-présidents, deux premiers ministres et plus d'une vingtaine de ministres qui ont donné un cachet spécial 
à ce forum. Je salue également la contribution des décideurs, des investisseurs, des promoteurs de projets, des partenaires financiers et des dirigeants d'entreprises nationaux et internationaux. Au total, l'AIF 2022 a enregistré près de 1800 participants, toutes catégories confondues. C'est l'occasion de féliciter Madame le ministre du Plan et du Développement, ainsi que M. Akinoumi Adesina, président du groupe de la Banque africaine de Développement, et les partenaires pour la parfaite organisation de cet important événement, en particulier, bien sûr, avec l'équipe organisationnelle de l'AIF, à la tête de laquelle se trouve la dame de conviction, Madame Sinelou Aneou, que je voudrais également féliciter ici très sincèrement, avec bien sûr notre constante Odiqué. Merci d'être mise en état de santé. J'associe à ces remerciements le comité d'organisation pour la synergie d'action entre nos équipes et celle de la BAD. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, au cours des trois jours écoulés, ce sont sept sessions plénières, douze sessions parallèles sectorielles, 47 boardrooms ou salles de transaction qui ont été tenues ainsi que de nombreux B2B. Au vu des intérêts que vous avez manifestés au cours de ces journées transactionnelles, je me félicite que l'ambition de notre continent, déclinée à travers plusieurs projets structurants, soit comprise, partagée et soutenue par tous. À ce stade de mon propos, je voudrais, avec le président Adessina, me féliciter de ce que, en deux sessions au cours de la même année 2022, plus de 63 milliards de dollars de transactions aient pu être mobilisés pour le continent africain. C'est un record exceptionnel, jamais atteint par aucune organisation de cette nature en Côte d'Ivoire depuis l'indépendance. Par ailleurs, je note avec satisfaction que de nombreux projets sélectionnés pour le financement à cette édition sont dirigés par des femmes dynamiques et persévérantes. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, les résultats que nous venons d'atteindre lors de cette journée transactionnelle augure bien des lendemains meilleurs pour des économies plus résilientes et une Afrique plus prospère. Merci à tous et à chacun pour votre engagement constant à relever le défi de combler le déficit de financement de l'investissement en Afrique. L'AIF a encore une fois de plus démontré qu'il demeure un marché important permettant de mieux exploiter le potentiel de l'Afrique. Encore une fois, merci. Merci au groupe de la Banque africaine de développement et à son board et à ses partenaires pour cette belle initiative. Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, je voudrais clore mon propos en vous souhaitant bon retour, chacun d'entre vous, dans vos pays respectifs. C'est sur ces mots d'ambition et d'espoir pour l'Afrique que je déclare clos au nom de son Excellence, Monsieur Alassane Ouattara, président de la République de Côte d'Ivoire, les travaux de la troisième édition de l'Africa Investment Forum et rendez-vous à la quatrième édition pour une Afrique qui gagne. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Mais je ne voudrais pas quitter euh, cette euh, scène Or maybe I should say it in English. Uh, yes, uh, dear friend, uh, before I leave the floor, I will feel like uh, this is something missing if I do not give an important testimony, at least as far as I'm concerned. Yes, uh, the one who did not know what IF means, someone said it earlier, The first one was me, when it started, let's say a couple of months ago, maybe a year ago. Because to tell the whole story, 
IAF was not meant to be held these few days. It was meant to be done last year with uh, our president from South Africa coming here. But unfortunately, we had at the same time Omicron. This day was very difficult, hard one. I will call uh, Adesina at 4 a.m. in the morning. Thanks to God, Grace was by his side to say, what do we do? Do we keep it? Don't we keep it? And we went like that. We went on until finally it was decided it will be canceled because so many people were worried that with new variant of COVID that no one knew at that time, no one knew what was going to come. And after all the work that the technician, the team, every single person who was there was done, even in our side, it was very sad, but we had to cancel it. Not knowing that maybe just a year later, we'll be here watching what we're watching today. So when President Adesina was talking about what they did this past couple of weeks, what happened these few days, I just want to recall that it's just not that. It's also what was done a year back. Every single person you cite here worked as hard as they did, and then nothing happened. But yet, they were not discouraged. They kept, you know, <laughs> face. And it was really an honor, a pleasure, that Côte d'Ivoire was picked up because it was not obvious. It was initially done to be held every single year in South Africa. No one knew that one day, because of COVID, because of this, we might think about another country. So Côte d'Ivoire opened the door. We're really happy that everything went as well as we thought it could be. This is why, uh, and uh, this is why I re uh, we really want to thank you also uh, in my term as I have the floor today, uh, President Adesina. We know you, Adesina, as the really, should I say it, yes, um, the dreamer, because when you talk, uh, people uh, realize that uh, you're not really there. You're somewhere else, you know. I mean, your mouth talk, but we could feel that your spirit is somewhere else, you know. And that only the people who have deep ideal value in them could do that. So I would say thank you, Adesina, the dreamer. Thank you, Adesina, the believer. Thank you, Adesina, the mentor. Thank you, Adesina, the man of conviction. Thank you, Adesina, the man of pragmatism. Thank you, Adesina, the man of action. And today, I can add that. Thank you, Adesina, the dancer. Thank you all for the love you showed us for this country. And naturally, uh, I would like not to follow, as I say, to thanks also Shinolo Anehu, who knows why I'm saying that. She helped us so much to be able to be ready for the boardroom. Thank you, Shinolo. Thank you, Onike, for all you did for us, for the understanding, and for all that. As we about to leave, I would like uh, to tell you how happy, as I say, we feel on behalf of my head of state. Uh, I wish you all a nice trip back home, but welcome back to Abidjan. You will leave this country. We might not see you tomorrow, after tomorrow, but uh, you will leave somewhere here, a part of your heart, and you will go with a part of ours. Thank you so much.
J'invite à présent les ministres présents dans la salle, ainsi que le président du groupe de la Banque africaine de développement, Dr Akin Moumi, à dessiner à rejoindre le Premier ministre de la République de Côte d'Ivoire, son Excellence Patrick Cachy, pour une photo de famille. Alors c'est ainsi, c'est ainsi que prend fin ce forum en dansant, comme vous pouvez le constater. <laughs> Wonderful steps, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs>